Hello everybody, I am out in the, uh, well, fairly miserable Midlands today, driving a pair of most unusual cars. Now I say most unusual, not because of quite what they are, but because of where they've come from. You see, right now I am driving a 1997 Volvo V70R that's been imported from Japan. Now, there's a lot of reasons to import a car from Japan, but I think most people would assume that you'd only really do that with, well, Japanese cars. However, there's an awful lot to be said for importing other things too, if nothing else than the fact that many Japanese cars are very well looked after. There's a lot of fairly well-heeled car enthusiasts over there. They've also got roads which are notoriously glassy smooth, so they're not as hard on their cars as our natty European roads and they don't chuck salt on them every winter. That's one reason many classic Japanese cars don't really survive being in Britain for all that long. This car belongs to James, who runs a small business called JT Auto Classics. There's some people that you can tell start car businesses because they want to make loads of money, and there's others who start a car business because they clearly love cars, and it's very easy to see that James falls into the latter category. If you pop onto his website and see his small stock list, you'll see that each car has a fantastic backstory, is in ridiculously good condition, and is, well, quite different. There's no particular theme connecting all of his cars. They are just all pretty cool cars. If the Volvo V70R were a book, it would simply be called How to Get Your IKEA Wardrobe from A to B Very Quickly. Like many cars of the period, this is a bit of a TARDIS. It doesn't look like a big car at all, but there is a ridiculous amount of space in here. Its really boxy styling means that you have ludicrous storage space in the back, and you can see very easily where these old Volvos get their reputation as the car of choice for the antiques lover. This one is mostly standard. There are a couple of subtle modifications, so subtle indeed that if I didn't really know about them, I think I might have missed them. The first being those beautiful Enki wheels that the car is wearing. They suit this car's styling down to a T. The graphite grey finish looks fantastic paired with this car's beautiful saffron metallic paintwork. It's a colour very reminiscent of Honda's Imola Orange. It's not quite as metallic as that, but it's a pretty stunning shade. And indeed, from the outside, this car it looks pretty mega. It's got that very classic 90s sort of boxy look about it, but when it's on a Volvo, it really kind of works. The other modification is to the exhaust system. It has a high-flow catalytic converter and uh, possibly a, a little bit of work in the back box because when you put your foot down, although it doesn't move quickly, it sounds great. It's just the right kind of note for this sort of car. Many people will know this five-cylinder lump as being the same one, more or less, as used in a number of fast Fords of the sort of early 2000s, Focus ST and RS. For those interested, I'll now put the specs on the screen of this car so you can get a, a rough idea. Certain cars I feel very comfortable about talking about, the details and model history and things like that, generally those that I'm more familiar with. Others I kind of try and steer away from doing that, and, and this is going to be one of those cars. Volvo people are quite fanatical, I have found, and honestly, if I try and talk about this car's model history too much, I know I will get things wrong. What I can tell you is that the V70R was a direct replacement for the very well-known and rather famous 850R. Remember that one? That's the estate car that went racing. This is a Phase 1 V70R. It's an early car, and it, it does feel very much 1990s in here. Now, there were a few different changes between the two phases, one of which being the gearing. In the later cars, it was apparently uh, a little bit shorter, because this car will happily bimble along on the motorway at barely any revs at all. 
that'll probably help your fuel economy a, a little bit, but I wouldn't bank on a 1997 five-cylinder turbocharged petrol car being that great on fuel. And something like this is, in general, a bit of an oddity. On the face of it, it's kind of hard to imagine who might buy a car like this. You see, it's not super new, which does count against it now. That means you can't, say, drive it into London without being fined for the privilege. It's not super good on fuel. It's not also a particularly old, so it's not sort of like a really funky, weird 70s or 80s Volvo. It sits in a bit of a no-man's land. However, I think that probably means that Round about now is a fairly good time to buy these. It means that examples like this, which are both original and in good condition, can still be found. Give it another 5 or 10 years and I would wager that finding a V70R in this kind of condition is going to be bloody hard. Now the engine is quite reluctant to kick down and also fairly reluctant to use all of the revs available to it. It is brisk, not fast. In many ways this car actually reminds me quite a bit of the sort of cars that manufacturers keep on their heritage fleets. The vast majority of it is quite original and it seems to be well, pretty tight. There's a few little fun details in here like the sort of weird kind of obelisky type thing up here which is apparently part of an old Japanese TV sat-nav combo which sadly doesn't work. You've got all original stuff down here. The dials are still in kilometres an hour and this car has covered just over 109,000 of those. That translates to less than 70,000 miles. And that's also fairly impressive for a 20-year-old Volvo. Volvos are the kind of car that when people bought them new, well, they, they bought them with the intent of using them, and they were generally used quite hard. I've spoken to quite a few manufacturers themselves, and when they are actually trying to acquire cars for their own heritage fleets, they are always looking for cars that have been used but looked after. And that can actually be quite difficult in some cases. I can imagine a lot of V70s were probably used for towing. I'm sure there's quite a few of them as well that made their way into the hands of young gentlemen who just saw them as a cheap way to get the same engine as a Focus ST and they wanted to mod them up and do silly things and basically destroy them in the process. 20 years of hard work is also enough to kind of, well, kill any car if you don't look after it and although Volvos are fairly robust, they are not unbreakable. One thing I must say for this car is that although it is the performance variant of the V70, it is extraordinarily comfortable. The seats are pretty good, not the best that I've been in and, and not the softest, but they are pretty decent. However, the suspension in this car is just magnificent. I mean, really, seriously, properly good. brakes in the car are not the sharpest, but then in fairness, I wouldn't really expect them to be. It does actually sound pretty good when you let it rev out, but yeah, it is ludicrously long geared. Unfortunately, there is no real way to control the gears yourself. All you can do is lock it in low or in third. This car does have a very sophisticated, or at least for the time, all-wheel drive system, which means if you are the sort of person that wants to enjoy your old Volvo year-round, it's going to be pretty good at doing that. I mean, let's face it, the Swedes do not muck about when it comes to snow. But trust me, I've seen it. Yeah, the steering rack is quite slow in this, so when you're going through sort of tighter bends, you probably need to turn the wheel a little bit more than you would expect, but there is absolutely no slack in it whatsoever. It's actually really precise, and that's the sort of thing that you don't always expect, and not just when you get in a 20-year-old car, but when you get in any car like this. A lot of them can have a, a little bit of slop around the straight ahead. No such thing with this. The interior is most certainly an acquired taste. It's not black, I'll give it that, and I don't know what this colour is called, but it's um, interesting, to say the least. I mean, it's just a, a, a bit odd. You'd need to want it, I think. It's, it's a Marmite interior, let's, let's be nice about it. But, 
going back to the original question, who on earth is going to want to buy a car like this? Well, I think this would appeal to the sort of person that collects cars that are just a little bit different. And the nice thing about this is that although it isn't granted yet a sort of a, a proper classic, as it were, you know, it's not a 70s or 80s car, it is a 22-year-old car. So in some cases, it may actually classify for classic insurance, even if it doesn't. With it being a Volvo, they're still actually pretty cheap to run and to insure. It is ludicrously practical. And believe it or not, there are actually quite a few people out there for whom outright performance simply isn't the most important thing. They want a car that they can take out and simply enjoy driving. And it must be said that this is actually quite a nice car to drive, more so than I expected it to be. I thought it might be sort of super racy and perhaps a little bit too stiff, but actually that's not the case at all. You can see out of it brilliantly, which is again a common theme with cars of the era. It's got both sunroof and aircon in it, which is great. You've got CD player and tape actually, and in fact it's a cool little CD changer down here, and your usual FM, AM, all that sort of jazz. I had to drive this car for about 20 minutes before we started the review, and on the motorway it's very well behaved, nice and refined, it does the job. Come on, come on! <sighs> yes, if you're expecting it to be sort of focus ST or RS levels of performance, look elsewhere. But if you want a kind of weird, quirky, unusual car that's modern enough that you can use it all the time, it's practical enough, you can do basically anything with it, you can take it to a, an antiques fair and chuck a load of stuff in the back, but it, it actually looks a, a bit racy and, and a bit sexy, it's a bit different, it's a good car, like I say. I am not a Volvo expert at all, but you don't see these around much anymore and you certainly don't see them in this condition and i can see exactly why james went to all the trouble of having this thing shipped halfway across the world despite it being i guess to many people a fairly ordinary car because it is remarkable and i know what it looks like underneath it's clean there too and that is a big thing to look out for on these cars so if you're in the market for a bit of a different family car give James a shout. I'm going to keep enjoying this for now and then we're going to hop into his other car that I'm driving today and that one is a little more performance orientated. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this little look at a Volvo with a history nearly as colourful as the exterior. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already and I shall see you for the next one. Bye bye.